Good morning, Bannister Road Baptist Church. Good morning. Uh, let's go uh, to the Bible. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. The Bible says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. If I had the title of the message, I would title it, Fear Not. And this is part three. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you and we thank you for how you have loved us. Thank you for giving us another opportunity to look at your word. Lord Jesus, we acknowledge that you are the master teacher. Teach through me right now through the person of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I yield to you. Use me to glorify God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Three times in the Christmas story, the message, fear not, rings loud and clear. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 26, the Bible says in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. And he was sent to a virgin. Her name was Mary. And verse 28 says that the angel came in unto her and said, told Mary that she was highly favored and blessed. And 29 tells us that she was troubled. But then verse 30, the angel said unto her, fear not. And I want to tell you that from, from, from that text, we can understand that we shouldn't fear what it is that God has for us to do. And the, the angel wanted Mary not to fear what it was that God had for her to do. Then in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 and 20, the angel appeared unto Joseph in a dream and told Joseph not to fear what it was that God had for him to do, but also what God had for Joseph to do, it would cause people to say some things about him. And, and the Bible's teaching us not to fear what people think about us. And in here, in Luke chapter 2, in our text today, verses 8 through 11, the Bible's teaching us not to fear having an intimate relationship with God. Because having an intimate relationship with God is possible through the Lord Jesus Christ. One of the biggest tricks of the devil is confusion or a lack of understanding. He wants people to believe you can't really be close to God. You can't really have a relationship with God. And some feel like they're not good enough for God to love them or for God to use them. Don't be duped into that erroneous perspective. In 1998, I was so far away from God, and I didn't know if it was possible to have a relationship with God. And I made a decision. I said, Lord, if you're real, I want to be close to you. I want to have a relationship with you. Well, here it is, 22 years later, I can testify that it's possible. If you make the right day-by-day -day decisions, and you got to understand there's going to be failure after failure when it comes to having an intimate relationship with God, but God is so gracious. In Romans 5 and verse 20, the Bible says, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. How many know that God will give you the grace you need to become the person that he wants you to be? Um, what sin have you allowed in your life that you don't believe that God can give you victory of? Ask God to forgive you while you learn to grow and trust him from your past experiences. Someone said, uh, you fooled me once, shame on me, shame on you. You fooled me twice, shame on me. And some of us have been deceived by the devil way too many times. In ancient times, it was a, a common tradition for families with financial means to hire a herald to announce the birth of their child. And that person would walk around and they would herald 
the, the, the announcement of the child's birth because back then children were seen as a symbol of God's blessings. In Psalms 127 and verse 3, the Bible says children are an heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. So here the herald was hired to announce the good news that a child was born. And that is precisely what God did. He sent an angel to proclaim or announce the birth of the child, the Lord Jesus, who was born king. And this is all a part of the good news. Um, this should be considered the best news in the world, hearing about Jesus, because Jesus came into this world to save sinners. And who God sent the angel to to, to pronounce this news is inquisitively interesting. He sent the angel to a woman, and this woman was a virgin. Her name was Mary. And Mary was a spouse to Joseph, and Mary and Joseph were not well off. They were a bit under middle class, some would say. But Joseph, the Bible says, was a just man, not just any kind of man. He was a righteous man. And then the angel appeared to these shepherds. Pay attention to verse 10 of Luke chapter 2. It says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Hearing about Jesus is good news. And hearing about Jesus should produce something in our lives. The Bible says here in, in verse 10, good tidings of great joy. When you know your sins have been forgiven, it should produce joy in your life. Now you think about it. People are so miserable today. Look at social media, the things that people post and the things that people say. And, and the things that people do just to get people to like, like their posts or, or to get people to comment on their posts, uh, people are just miserable. But when you sit and think about it, those of us who have Jesus, that shouldn't be said of us. Jesus is the most significant source of joy. Joy is different from happiness. In a general sense, joy means gladness of heart, to be glad and rejoice. However, this joy is connected to a person and not our situation. See, I'm happy when my air conditioner is working. See, I'm, I'm happy when there's no death in my family. See, I'm, I'm happy when I don't need surgery. And can I keep it real with you? I'm happy when my car starts. I'm happy when I got a little money in the bank and I'm able to pay all my bills, I'm happy you get it. You can keep going on and on and on and on and on with that. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm, I'm not going to get in trouble. I was about to say when my wife, you know, I'm, I ain't going to get in trouble this morning. Uh, real joy and gladness can only be experienced in the presence of God. And we can experience the presence of God in good times and bad times because God is omnipresent. What is your mood like right now? Be honest with yourself. What is your mood like right now? Ask yourself, why do you feel that way or, 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 or why do you feel the way you feel right now? What do you focus on? Are you focus on God or are you focus on the things of this world? Philippians 4 and verse 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be mo known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Then it says, Paul says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. The peace of God and joy is, is often connected in the Bible. In Galatians 5 and verse 22 and verse 23, the Bible says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, and get it, joy, and you see it next to that, is peace, connected. When we stay close to God, there will be a continuous improvement in our behavior, conveying a cooperative spirit to God's will for our lives. It is God's will 
for us to be joyful. Nehemiah 8.10, at the end of it says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Certain people have a positive impact in our lives if we're honest this morning. Certain people, when they're in our presence, brings joy. I have a sign in my office, everyone brings joy. Some when they come in and some when they leave. I love spending time with my wife and kids. I do. It's just something about my wife and something about my kids. I just love it. I love it. I love coming home and, and, and being in their presence. But can I be honest with you? I love spending time with God even more than I love spending time with my family. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 10, the angels told the shepherd, Fear not, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. This joy that I have of spending time with God is not just for Sean Moore. This joy, this good news, Jesus, is not just for a certain group. He says in verse 10, this news shall be to all people. And we know just from studying the Bible, verse 10 is referring, to, to referring first to the nation of Israel. Because Romans 1 and verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. But then Paul says to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The promise of salvation is for anyone who believes. Romans 10 verse 9 through 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then verse 12 says, Romans chapter 10, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now what we need to do as a church is make sure the church doors are available to all people. <sighs> we need to give people the liberty to disagree with us regarding uh, politics, racism, etc. We need to be soul conscious, eternal conscious, God conscious, sin conscious, Christ-like actions conscious. Drunks should be welcome in the church. Drug addicts, so-called gays, fornicators, whatever the sin, you are welcome, Christ says. You're not welcome to stay that way, but you're welcome to come. You shouldn't have to dress or act a certain way to be welcome in the church. Give people time to grow. Show people the love of God. In Luke chapter 19 and verse 10, the Bible says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which is lost. We need to be God's agenda conscious. And God's agenda is people coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And in Luke chapter 2 and verse 11 the Bible says, for unto you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Let's ask yourself, be honest, are you focused on telling people about Jesus? What are you here on this earth to do? It's more than just taking care of our immediate family. God has a purpose and a plan for our life. There isn't a person that's on this earth right now that don't need saving from their sins or their sin problem. People talking about, people talking about the Bible is ancient and the Bible isn't relevant for today. But if you look at the news, people need Jesus more today than ever. The message about Jesus is for everyone. Go back to Luke chapter 2 and verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds. Being a shepherd was kind of on the level of the fast food industry. Status-wise and socially, they were looked down upon. Thank God, God is not like man. Look at the words of Joseph in Genesis 46 and verse 31. When Joseph reunited with his brothers, Joseph said unto his brother, and he said, and unto, unto his father's house, he said, I will go up and show Pharaoh and say unto him, 
my brother and my father's house. And I got, the, I got the wrong verse. I got the wrong verse. But let me get this verse. Genesis 46. Let me make sure that I'm giving you the right verse. And if I don't have the right verse, then I'm going to just tell you what it says. Genesis 46 and verse 34, not 31. Okay, verse 34 says that ye should, when Joseph, this is the advice that Joseph was giving his brothers. He said, and that ye shall say, thy servant's trade hath been about cattle from our youth, even until now, both we and also our fathers, that ye may dwell in the land of Goshen. And look at what Joseph said. He says, for every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. The, the Egyptians look down upon shepherd, being a shepherd. But get this. Do you remember what Moses was doing when God called him? In Exodus 3 and verse 1, the Bible says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jephthah, his father-in-law, the priest of the Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Hor. When, when Moses, when God called Moses to go deliver the nation of Israel, Moses was shepherding. He was taking care of the sheep. Look at, do you remember what David did, what David was doing when God chose him? In 1 Samuel 16 and verse 11, the Bible says, And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, look at what the Bible says. He keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down hither until he come. Please don't teach your kids or yourself to think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. God can use anybody, and he can use any vocation to provide for us. I'd rather my kids work in the fast food industry than selling dope or being locked up. Shepherds were considered humble and despised people. The shepherd position was so disrespectful that a father would usually give that job to the youngest son. You go back and look at 1 Samuel 16 and verse 11. He said, yeah, I have the youngest, which was David. And he said, he's out there keep taking care of the sheep. Back in the Bible days, the religious crowd taught that the shepherds were not good enough for God. Shepherds were outcasts in Israel because they spent so much time with the sheep, they were physically dirty most of the time. And they would be out for weeks or even months sometimes and they were considered unclean. Now, this would make a shepherd just feel like they was unworthy. And many people in the church, let's be honest, a lot of people come to the church and they feel unworthy of God's love and they feel unworthy of God using them because we know our past. I know my past. Um, we, and, and, and not just our past, but some of us know where we are right now in our present situation. We know where we are. And Satan says, God don't love you. God, God can't use you. Look at you. Look at, your, look at what you're doing. Look at the kind of person that you are. Look at what you've done again. I know you said you're not going to do that, but you done did it again. Look at you. And he, he loves to accuse us. And then all of a sudden, guilt falls on us. Shepherds felt inadequate. Do you feel inadequate right now? And the shepherds were not the most educated people on the earth. They were considered not the smartest ones in the world. But I got to tell you something. Don't compare your, your smarts or intellect with other people. And 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 12 says, We dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Comparing yourself with other people is not a wise thing to do. And shepherds always fell short because sheep needed 24-hour care. How could a shepherd keep the Sabbath without neglecting the sheep? And shepherds would not have been expected to be the ones God would come and announce some good news to. And most of the time, Important information is shared with those so-called essential people or important people. Please don't get frustrated when people make you feel like you're not on their level or, or like you're not important enough for them to share certain inf information with you. 
Stay focused on the fact that God is not like man. God wants to speak to all who will listen. It doesn't matter what people think about you. What matters is what God thinks about you. God thinks so much about you and myself that he sent his only son to die on the cross for us. See, focusing on what God has said about us is the quickest way to forget what people say about us. But focusing on what people may say about you is the quickest way to forget what God has said about you. In John 3 and verse 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. God didn't send Jesus to start a religion. And God, you can be religious and still go to hell. And these shepherds in verse 15, the Bible says, And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now, go even up to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. These shepherds were devout. And I love what they did in verse 17. It says, and when they got there, well, verse 16 says, and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Verse 17 says, and when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. That is, that's so important. You can't go by that. What they did is told other people what they had saw and learned about Jesus. That's important because in the church, that is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be witnesses. We're supposed to be telling other people what we have learned about Jesus. Then I love verse 20 because verse 20 says, and the shepherds returned. And what did they do in Luke chapter 2 and verse 20? The Bible says they returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that he had, they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Man, the Christian life is all about glorifying God and praising God and making sure that God gets all the glory. What are you doing right now that's glorifying God? How often do you really take time out and praise God for his word, for preaching, for the things he's done in your life, for the things he's shown you? How often do you really just praise God? How often do you talk about Jesus? What do you tell people about Jesus? Let me give you three things that you could just, just jot down that you can tell people about Jesus. Jesus came to save all people. The only sin that can't be forgiven is the sin of rejecting Jesus. All other sins, God says, I can forgive that. But when it comes to you rejecting the gospel message, that can't be forgiven. Jesus came to save all people. Number two, Jesus made it possible for a man to have an intimate relationship with God. I don't know about you, but man, it's, it's, it's nice to have some people that you can be real close to, you know, that you can talk to about anything and they don't judge you. They don't look down upon you. It's, it's nice to have those kind of people in your life. Jesus is one of those people. Jesus made it possible for us to have an intimate relationship with God. I don't know about you, but I've learned in life it is better to put my confidence in God rather than put my confidence in man. Man will let you down. God will never let you down. Number three thing you can tell people about Jesus, because Jesus was born of a woman, he understands our struggles. He understands your struggles. Romans 3 and verse 20, the Bible says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them. You got to get this, that believe. <laughs> for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. It is so important to just believe we cannot earn God's acceptance by keeping the law or doing good. You can't do good enough. You can't do enough good work to be accepted by God. It is by faith, the Bible says. Galatians 2 and verse 16, the Bible says, knowing that a man is not justified, get it, a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed 
in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. The law shows us how sinful we are. It reveals our need for a Savior. Until we see ourselves as a sinner, we will never see our need for Jesus. It's not Jesus plus good works. It's not Jesus plus joining a good church. It's not Jesus plus adding a, 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 a seed offering. It's not Jesus plus nothing else. It's putting our faith in Jesus Christ and him alone. Have you decided to follow Jesus? And God is saying, fear not. Following Jesus means you can't stay the same. I know, and that's a fearful thing. It's, it's, it's still fearful now because you, you have to learn that your identity, when you become a Christian, your identity is in Christ and not in what the world says your identity is. And that's hard because you start losing yourself. You, and, and watch this. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. I know I had the wrong verse. I had 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, but that's not by faith, not by sight. We want 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It is very, very fearful to start becoming a different individual. You, 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 you have to let go of your old way of doing things. And that, that's, that's fearful because we're, we, we get comfortable uh, with, with handling situations the way we always handled it. But God says, no, I want you to start handling this situation a little different. If, if, if people are mean to you, I don't want you cursing them out. If people are mean to you, I don't want you trying to fight. I want you to show them love. No, that's not going to work, Lord. But that's that identity of learning that now when you're in Christ, you got to do things a little differently. That's fearful. God says, fear not. Fear not. Trust me. Do things my way. You cannot live this Christian life based on how you feel, but by faith. Now, come on now. You, you don't bypass what I just said because we love to make decisions based on how we what? Feel. Well, I feel they were disrespectful. Okay, <laughs> you might feel that, but what does the Bible say? We cannot make decisions based on how we feel, but by faith. If you are not changing daily, you probably are not following God. Get what I just said. If you're not changing daily, you're probably not following God. What is God telling you right now not to fear and you are refusing to listen? I used to fear that I wouldn't be able to please God. I, I, I didn't think I could live this Christian life. I feared that. I, I, I feared trying to live a life sober. I, I feared that. Um, I feared losing my friends. I did. I, I feared that. I feared people mocking me for being a follower of Christ. I, I feared that. But here it is 22 years later. I got to say I am so grateful I didn't allow Fear to keep me from receiving the gospel message and giving my life to Christ. And there was this man who had what he called a dumb stop sign in his neighborhood. It was in the middle of the road, and he deemed this, this stop sign just unnecessary. So he rarely saw any cars coming down the road. So early in the morning, it was still dark outside, on his way to work, he would just usually ignore the sign and just zoom right through it. Well, one morning when he was just soared through the stop sign, he almost hit a bus full of kids on their way to school. So he slams on the brakes, his heart's beating fast and, and hard, and realizing that he almost caused a serious accident that he felt be because he felt this sign was unnecessary. Now he's sitting there thinking, oh, that sign was there for a purpose. God has given us his word, and he has given us his word for a purpose. And many people believe that God's word is unnecessary. They believe coming to Jesus is superfluous. The thought of having a relationship with God through Jesus is unnecessary. People try to develop their own way of having 
a relationship with God. The Bible says, fear not. Submitting to God and following God's way of doing things can be fearful, but the Bible says, fear not. In John 14 and verse 6, Jesus says unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Don't fear repenting of your sins and, and putting your trust in Jesus Christ. Submitting to God through the person of Jesus Christ will lead you to a life filled with earthly and eternal blessings, physical and spiritual blessings, blessings that you can see and blessings we can't know until we get to heaven. Fear not. Give your life entirely to Jesus. And Jesus laid the foundation and set a perfect example for living a life that is pleasing to God. Let's do the same. In John chapter 5 and verse 30, Jesus says, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will. Get what he said. I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. So if I could encourage you in 2022, fear not. Give God all of you. And go back and read Luke chapter 2 for yourself. And get this, do what the shepherds did in verse 15. And I love what they did in verse 15. And what they did in verse 15, they heard what the angel said. But in verse 15, the Bible says they went and checked it out for themselves. So what I'm telling you today is that what you done heard about Jesus, that's cool. What I'm preaching about and what Pastor Scott preached about and whoever else you listen to, that's cool. But what you need to do is check Jesus out for yourself. So in 2022, I'm going to challenge you. Spend more time in the Bible. Spend more time getting to know Jesus. And then when you get to know Jesus for yourself, do what the, angel, do, do what the shepherds did in verse 17. Because the Bible says in verse 17, And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. That is what we're supposed to be doing as a body of Christ is telling other people about Jesus. If we're not doing that, we're falling short on the mission. And I want to encourage you, fear not. Don't fear rejection. I know people get mad when you start talking about Jesus, but don't fear them. It is better to fear God than to fear man. I want to encourage you, 2022, walk courageously and don't fear. Fear not. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you, and we thank you for how you have loved us. Thank you for your word. Help us, Father God, to be courageous this year. Help us to be bold and open our mouths and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with those that we are around. And Lord, help us, Lord, to understand that we will give account for this life that you have given us to live. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, if there's anyone that's listening to this message that may not know Jesus as their Savior, we're praying that today would be the day of salvation for them, that they have repented of their sins and they will make a conscious decision to, to say, I want to follow Jesus and, and know, Lord, that it's possible to have a close relationship with you. We want to thank you for allowing us to get to know you, and Lord, but there's so much more we need to learn. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We love you.